Welcome to the teaching ministry of B.D. Hyman. B.D. Hyman's teachings will prepare you to face life's difficult challenges through the power and knowledge of God's Word. Join us now as we discover the truth in God's Word with B.D. Hyman. Hello and welcome to the program. I want to talk to you today about the fire of God. In John 3.16, the word says, John answered, saying to all, I indeed baptize you with water, but one mightier than I is coming, whose sandal strap I am not worthy to loose. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. There are many, many, probably the majority of Christians, who, when they're baptized in the Holy Spirit, just accept this as a a kind of a completion of, of their relationship with the Lord. They even may know that the baptism of the Holy Spirit is the new birth, but they never learn how to move into the fire. That's what we need. The Lord says that we are to be baptized with the Holy Spirit and fire. Fire. The fire of God is an amazing thing. It consumes evil and it empowers righteousness. Now, get this. It consumes evil and it empowers righteousness. That's why a lot of people who really don't want to get too close to God, just like they didn't want to get too close to the mountain in the Old Testament, who um, are a little afraid of the holiness of God because they don't really want to become holy, are afraid of the fire of God. Because this fire will consume evil, but it will empower righteousness. It will do the same. It will burn up the dross, the dross, the, the impurities that are within us and bring us into that place we need to be. So how do we get this fire? This is the question. How do we get this fire? We can talk about it. We can even understand it to a measure, but we need to appropriate it. And when you understand it, and when you are able to walk into this fire, you will be ecstatic. You really will. You will be ecstatic. In 2 Thessalonians 1, 6 through 10, since it is a righteous thing with God to repay with tribulation those who trouble you, those who do not repent, those who set themselves against you, will be in the tribulation, and that's when they will receive God's judgment. So don't ever think that anyone is getting away with anything. They're not. And to give you who are troubled rest with us when the Lord Jesus is revealed from heaven with his mighty angels. That's the glorification and the rapture. In flaming fire, taking vengeance on those who do not know God and on those who do not obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, that's quite a statement. You need to take it seriously. It's not just a casual remark. This is the word of God. In flaming fire, he is going to take vengeance on those who don't know God. And that means those who think they know God, but don't really know who he is. They have invented a whole God, a designer God that doesn't exist. And so... He will take vengeance in flaming fire on those who do not know who he really is and on those who do not obey the gospel of Jesus Christ, sons of disobedience. Sons of disobedience. These shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power when he comes in that day to be glorified in his saints and to be admired among all those who believe because our testimony among you was believed. The power is in the word. Every fire needs fuel. It needs to be fueled. If you have a natural fire in your fireplace and you don't add any wood to it, the fire will go out, even if it was a really strong fire to begin with. You have to keep adding wood or the fire goes out. Whatever it may be, the fuel of the fire has to continually be added. Well, the fuel of God's fire is the Word. The Word of God is the fuel 
of this fire. Those who love righteousness, who want to walk in righteousness, need to run to this fire, run to this power, this consuming fire. The word says our God is a consuming fire. And keep in mind that consumes evil and empowers righteousness. Those who don't believe, those who are not willing to take this gospel literally, should be afraid of the fire. They should, because it's not going to be of benefit to them. It's going to consume them. But those who believe, those who have ears to hear, and if you're listening to this program, you have ears to hear if you choose to use them. And those who do immerse themselves in the fire. It becomes shut up in our bones. It's, it's a welcome thing. It's, it's the very heart of God. It's the evidence of His love and His joy. So don't be afraid of this fire. God wants to burn up all the useless things in your life. He wants to help you get rid of all opposition. This fire burns up yokes and burdens and the past and all hindrance. It burns up all of our dross. I know that in the beginning of my walk with the Lord, one of my greatest challenges was getting past the past. And you may have hurts, betrayals, uh, just old habits, old circumstances that may be to do with family, with friends, with any, anything that is, exists, anything that's out there that you just can't get past. You think you do, and then in some way the devil works it out so that it rises up in your face and you're back being affected by it. Your joy is being stolen. Your peace is being stolen. You, you can't sleep well because you keep running it over in your head and you can't stop the, the video of things that happened running in your thoughts and in your dreams. This is something that is in the natural realm and we can get rid of it. So I had this same situation. I had a stepfather who was totally abusive and horrible that my mother married when I was three years old, so he was the only father I had actually consciously known. And he was a total abuser, he was violent, he was everything that was repulsive. And even though I hadn't seen him for years, even though my mother had divorced him when I was 13, finally, um, and he was out of my life and I had moved on with my life and I was now married and I had children and I had a wonderful marriage and a wonderful life and I loved my kids. This, this little pocket of hatred and betrayal wouldn't leave. Uh, my stepfather was an actor named Gary Merrill and he had a wonderful voice, a great timbre to his voice. So he did a lot of voiceovers on very big commercials. So I would constantly hear his voice on a television commercial and everything in me would just seize up and I'd start seething with hatred and remembering things. So when I met the Lord, uh, the first thing he said to me was I had to forgive my stepfather. And of course I contended with God as we do in the beginning when we don't know better. And I started talking to God about how vile this man was and the vile things he had done. And the Lord said, that doesn't matter. And I also had problems with forgiving my mother, who was totally controlling and who had seen nothing wrong with my stepfather's vile treatment of me and abuse of me in every conceivable way. Uh, because she liked being married to him and if he needed to do that to me to fulfill some sick problem he had, then that was okay with her. So I, I was really dealing with some stuff. And I went to the Lord and I said, okay, I know I have to forgive. I know I have to get past this. But even if I can somehow forgive, how do I get past it? How can I get to a place where it doesn't matter anymore? You see, true forgiveness is first the decision to forgive. That's obedience. Then it's the acknowledgement that there are situations that you and I can't forgive in our flesh. And so it needs the power of God to do it through us. And then the final phase is being able to have 
those memories come back because we won't be able to completely wash them out. But have them, when they pop up, be without any pain, no emotion attached to it. When I talk about my stepfather now, I have no emotions about him. He was just a person that was a very tragic person, a very pitiful person because he was so evil. But the things that I experienced and suffered in my childhood can't hurt me anymore. I don't care. It's not who I am. How did this happen? Because God taught me, and that's what I want to teach you in this series on the fire of God. God taught me how to let his fire burn it all up. And I will tell you, that is a joy, that is a release, that is a liberty that is indescribable. And if you have been tormented with memories of abuse and betrayal and just situations that you can't quite get rid of, what you need is for the fire of God to burn it up. Yes, you still know it happened. You're not going to develop amnesia. But it no longer matters to you. I can see Gary in a movie if I turn on a, an old movie. I like old movies. And I'll turn on an old movie and he'll be one of the actors in the movie. And I can watch him and I have no connection to him anymore. If I happen to like the movie and he's in it, I don't have to turn it off because it doesn't have anything to do with me anymore. I have no ties to that. I don't relate to that. It doesn't even cause me to remember anything horrible. I know who he is. He's no longer in my life. And what he did has been burned up. It's not part of me anymore. It can't hurt me anymore. And this is where I want you to get to. This is what I want you to, to move into. You see, when the Lord talks about us as clay, he is the potter and we're the clay. And he molds us and he shapes us. And clay is soft. Clay is easily broken until it's fired. But when it's been fired, then it's hardened and it's tough. And what God wants to do for you is to get you to that place where you learn how to walk into this fire of God. Let him burn up everything. Stop hanging on to the past. Stop hanging on to those, those hurts. I don't care how badly you were hurt. I don't care what level of loss you suffered. And I know that some of you have suffered terribly. It no longer has to be a factor in your life. There are people who suffer from clinical depression because they can't forget. They can't get past things that they went through. And they can't trust God because they were betrayed by people in their lives so hideously people they loved, people they trusted, that they can no longer trust God. I had an issue with that. I had trouble trusting Father God when I first came into the kingdom because of my experience with my father, my stepfather, who was the only father I knew. And so I had those issues. But when the fire of God burned that all up, it was no problem to trust God. And we can say, yes, God is not a human God can be trusted, but if we have those issues still in our lives, it's going to get in the way. But the fire of God can burn it up. And when you're fired by the fire of God, he puts that steel in you where you're no longer held bondage by emotions, by old feelings, by being easily upset. People oftentimes say to me, well, I wish I could be as tough as you. I mean, you, you just never get upset. Nothing bothers you. I guess you were just born that way. Oh, no. I don't think so. I used to get upset by everything. Now I rarely get upset. And when I do, I know what to do about it. And I know how to take it to the Lord and let his fire just move in and just take it away and get past it quickly, quickly. I used to become ragingly angry about many things. 
I used to get upset and cry about a lot of things. I was easily hurt by people, by their attitudes, by their betrayals. And I'm not that way anymore. Why? Because I haven't been able to change that, but the fire of God has. So now, and it doesn't mean I don't experience betrayals, go into ministry sometime, you'll find out how to experience betrayals. But it doesn't get to me anymore because before it even gets to me, the fire of God just burns it up. And I just walk right on and I do not have to go into a, a valley of despair. I don't have to work through it. I don't have to deal with it because the fire deals with it. The fire is that barrier, that protection. It is an amazing aspect of God. And if you have been a damaged person, if you are a damaged person, and most people in this world are, because this world is not a nice place. This world is a nasty place. But if you've been damaged by things, that damage can be eradicated. It doesn't have to hurt anymore. That's what the fire will do. In Daniel 7, verse 9, the word says, I watched till thrones were put in place, and the Ancient of Days was seated. And then it goes on to say, His throne was a fiery flame, its wheels a burning fire, a fiery stream issued and came forth from him. A thousand thousands ministered to him. Ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him. The court was seated and the books were opened. This describes the great white throne at the end of the thousand years. And even then, his throne was a fiery flame. We are, as, as was prophesied, in Ezekiel, as God spoke through Ezekiel, we are the wheel within the wheel. We are, go we are going to be an integral part of this fiery flame, the wheels of burning fire that come forth from God. When He is seated at the right throne, we're seated with Him. We're judging with Him at the great white throne. We're judging the nations and all those who've been brought up out of hell. And we are part of that fire. And God wants to move you into that in the measure for this time and place now. Because eventually we're going to be, even in the, the eyes of the nations, the eyes of the millennial and eternal nations, in the eyes of the world, therefore, we're going to be seen as fire. Fire flashing across the sky. Fire being part of us. But right now, we have to allow the fire of God to burn up all the hateful, horrible, hurtful things so that we are loosed from those things and able to move into the glory that God has planned for you. He doesn't want you to just get through this life, just slog along through the mud, you know, all those old faithless songs, you know, I'm just trudging along through the mud and the dirt and, and hoping that I survive, you know, at the end there's God. No, God's now. God's now. Get out of the dirt. Get out of the mud. Get into the fire and let it consume all those, those hurts, all those pains, all the emotional damage, all of the, the situations that you've gone through whether it's in business, whether it's family, whether it's with friends, whatever it is, whatever it is, God wants to handle it. But you have to move into this fire. That's why it's so sad that so many people receive the Holy Spirit and never understand the fire. Never. But you can. You can. And I want you to, to get a, a vision, to get an understanding of this. You can't get it from just this few minutes that I'm talking to you about it. You can't get it even just from my testimonies. You have to get it from the Word itself. 
You have to experience it. And I promise you, the moment you tap into this fire, the moment you step into that place where the fire starts consuming all the nasty stuff, you will feel a release. You won't want to hang on to it anymore. Because see, in the flesh, oftentimes I know, because I was there. We want to hang on to our, our hurts. We want to hang on to our hates. You know, the world tells us, don't, don't get mad, get even. And oh my, I was, I was the high priest of get even. I didn't want to forget anything because I was all about payback. Well, that's not who we are as Christians. God says, he said it, I read it to you. He'll take care of those people who hurt you. But you have to get past the hurt. So, please get these teachings, the fire of God, and learn what this can do for you. Learn how this can transform your life. Learn that you're not stuck with all of those memories, all of those places. And depression often comes from the spirits attached to these memories and these, these hateful things. Don't let it. Don't let yourself be dragged down. You know, people have depression at certain times of the year because of certain things that happened, and they get into these, these very vicious cycles. The fire of God will burn all that up. It will consume it. It will be no more. And as long as you stay with the Word and stay with the truth, and continue moving in the, the knowledge and the power of God, that fire will be fueled with the Word. And whatever comes your way, whatever is thrown at you, will be consumed with the fire of God. The individual teachings here are eternal flame, a fire goes before him, the refiner's fire, fiery faith, tongues of fire. Learn the significance of the tongues of fire that were on the heads of all of those in the upper room on the day of Pentecost, and the great I Am. We need to understand this character and this part of God so that we can allow it to transform our lives, to destroy the yokes, remove the burdens, burn up all the hurts and the pain and even the scars of the past. You don't have to be defined by things that happened before. And you don't have to be taken down by things that come at you now. Learn about the fire. There are many things that can get in the way of what God has promised in our lives. There are things that can block your healing. People pray and pray and pray and pray. And there are things that can stand in the way. There are hurts, there are bitternesses that can just exalt themselves against the knowledge of God. And you can sway back and forth. I know a lot of you do because I, I talk to you and I pray with you. And you're always welcome to call me for prayer. But when you do what I do for people, and it helps the ones who receive it, is help them get to the bottom of whatever the barrier is between them and the promises of God that are yes and amen. And there can be many hindrances to, to receiving your healing, to receiving your prosperity, in financial prosperity, to receiving um, any form of blessing, peace, joy. There are people who want joy but just can't get there because there are things that have just locked them up from the past. There are people who are still hanging on to religious traditions and false doctrine. That will prevent your healing and your prosperity and your joy and your peace all the time. Any form of religious tradition, any form of false doctrine will, will just build a barrier between you and what you are believing for. So you need to, to tap into the fire to get rid of all these things. And as you speak to them, as you deal with them, 
they will be burned up. But you need to be connected with a ministry that has discernment, that is operating in all the truth and all the power, and has the gifts operating, such as discernment of spirits and so on and so forth, that uh, can bring these things out of the darkness, reveal them, so that you can submit them to the fire of God to be burned up. Um, all satanic opposition, when identified and cast out, will be consumed in the fire of God if you know how to walk in it. See, this is, this is what the devil is afraid of. That fire terrifies him. And as we feed that fire with the word, he is constantly terrified. And the more terrified he is, the more aggressive he is, and the nastier he is. And you can allow this, this flame, this consuming fire of God, to get you past those areas of false doctrine that you're just having trouble letting go of. <laughs> those areas of religious teaching and religious connection that is, it's just difficult and you're, you're worried about you know who's going to be your friend because there's nobody that you know right now who's on your page. All these things the fire of God will take care of. I will tell you that when you get into this fire and stay there it's better than a month at the best health spa in the world. It will take the weight off your shoulders it will give you liberty, it will release God's joy in you in a way that is beyond anything you've ever experienced. You will have peace where there has been none. It's a spiritual detoxification. Everybody's talking about detoxing your body these days. Well, what we need is the fire of God to detoxify our walk, detoxify our soul, detoxify our spirit so that we can be totally one with God and have all of the blessings that he has already set aside for us. This fire will purge everything that stands between you and the Lord. It is the best detox, the best purge, the best health spa that exists. And I want you to experience it. I want you to understand what this is really all about because most people never get there. They just let the barriers stand. They let the hurts and the scars remain. Don't do that. I will see you next time. Meanwhile, remember John 8.32, you shall know the truth and it's the truth that will make you free. We trust that you have been encouraged in God's Word during this broadcast. If you have and would like others to enjoy the teaching, write to us. Or to order materials or to make a gift by phone, you can by calling the phone number on the screen.